This podcast is for anyone that knows they haven't yet found and offered up their best work, but are compelled to seek it out and do it. Are you ready to move your desk? This is Rebecca Clark, episode 199, What Struggle Brings, with Kevin Faulkner. As I've gone through my own journey this last couple of years of going, okay, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to share? What am I, you know, and working through all these things, I thought I had no problems, <laughs> I have all these problems, <laughs> and to go all of these people right now with all the bad in the world going on, there's this whole slew of people kind of rising up and going, I feel compelled to share what I'm going through. And I feel like when I listen to your stuff, I'm like, oh, he has gone through stuff and he's compelled. Like there's this inner thing going, you've got to share it. You got to, it's part of your healing. It's part of yeah, something. I, so. it up. I mean, it just, <laughs> it feels yeah. like the only thing that I, I can do or should do. Okay. Uh, it's, it's an interesting feeling that I can't fully explain. And it is, it's terrifying because like, this is all of the parts of me that I tried to like suppress and put down and hide from even myself for years. Right. Um, but knowing just the full depths of how deep these, this pain can go sometimes within yourself because of your life or even just your relationship to yourself, not knowing who and what you are is staggering. <laughs> it is yeah. almost impossible to deal with. It's through people coming out and sharing their, their stories that you realize, okay, wait, I'm not alone. Yeah. And this, this is how they handled it. Maybe if I apply just a thing or two from them, maybe I might be able to change and find this inner peace in me right? that just wants to be expressed. I, it's funny, I've been coming to some realizations and thinking a lot about purpose in life. And I think a lot of our purpose really is imbued in us before we were born. The things that we love, the things that we enjoy, we have no control over whether or not we enjoy them, whether or not they speak to us. They just do. We can choose whether or not we participate in it, but we have no say in what I love to do. I had no control over the fact I love to draw. I just love to draw. I love to write. I actually love to speak. I'm kind of terrified of doing it in front of people, but I love to do it. It's something yeah. I, I just do by nature. I can choose not to do it, but if I choose to follow those promptings, those soul callings, those things that are in you that just want to live, if I do that, then I think you live your purpose, you help the world, you help everything in the world expand and grow in a better way, because if it's something you love, then love is being expressed and love will grow in everybody and everything that you right. touch. So I have my little two cents on that, but. <laughs> no, that, that, that was beautiful, actually. You kind of hit upon a point that I want to come back to. Well, I'll say it right now, and then I want you to actually share what your name is. <laughs> yes. Your story. <laughs> Might be important. But I love how you jumped right in. And that's what I, I love about some of these conversations, right? You just feel compelled to just start. But one of the things you mentioned, like you can't control something that's in you from before you were born. And I'm, mm -hmm. I have really noticed that lately going, wow, I think there's a reason I have this desire. And you can try to suppress certain desires in yourself, like, no, no, I shouldn't do that. That's not, that shouldn't be me. That shouldn't, da, da, da. and then you're like, wait a second, but what if that desire is there because it is something I'm supposed to pull the string on? What if that is me? <laughs> right. <laughs> All these voices around me have been telling me who and what I am my entire life, and I've never given myself the chance to speak. Right. To, to dream fully. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave today dreams and never mind reality. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and even the daydreams go away, right? If you start working too hard and following what you think, you know, the job is you're supposed to do or the the life trajectory, and you even forget about daydreams. You're like, forget it. I'm not even gonna bother dreaming. I'm just gonna be the robot I'm supposed to be. <laughs> and so, what kind of life is that? Like you can terrible. be alive without living. Like what? being alive and living are not mutually exclusive. Like right, right. Be alive and be operating, but not be living at all. And what kind of life is that? If if you're not dreaming, you're not expanding, you're not growing, you're not enjoying all of these moments. And that was somewhere I definitely was. Absolutely, I've gone through the full depths of that that mental game. Um, mm -hmm. Speak about it a lot in my book. Some of it's pretty heavy, so you haven't gotten your copy yet. Be prepared. <laughs> well, well, I have to tell you, okay, and we will have you introduce yourself, right? But we keep getting good <laughs> ideas here. 
Um, so I wanted to check on my order, right? So I go to my Amazon app and for the first time, I mean, of course, I shouldn't say the first time. This is the first time I've noticed because I didn't use to check. I just like wait for a package to arrive. But it says the order can, oh, I put it back here. It, there, it's blurred out and it says hidden for your privacy. Oh. And, and I, I'm like, what's wrong with this? Why is it like hiding happen. for your privacy? <laughs> and then I realized, oh, he must have a certain rating on it or something that, or there not maybe them. because they're it's swearing in children. it. Huh? <laughs> like I said, it was not for children. I mean, I did have to click the adult box because there is. Okay. Some, that's some what video. it is because it's protecting me from anyone uh, that would look at my stuff and my embarrassment. <laughs> the embarrassment <laughs> of dealing with Kevin. <laughs> of buying your book. That's so funny. <laughs> but I thought, oh, I can't like really figure out what the full lesson is there right now. But I was like, there's something hidden in this. This was a good moment. There's some kind of lesson I have from this because we're trying to hide from ourselves or something like yeah. the things that are bad, but I was just like, Well, you know, maybe something in my book will confront you in a way that you don't like it, <laughs> but maybe there's something hidden in there. <laughs> right, right. So good. Well, Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey. Like, I just figure, you know, you should at least be able to say you're Kevin. <laughs> like, sure, yeah, I'll say what, this. What's so, going on here? <laughs> uh, my name is Kevin Faulkner. I never know quite what to say when it's, who are you? You're right. It's like, well, I don't know. I'm a lot of things. Well, who are you right now? That's a great question. Uh, I'm a poet and artist. Um, okay. I have a degree in graphic design that I got from Middle Tennessee State University that okay. I utilized and I uh, created the book here, What Struggle Brings, this book of my art, poetry, and prose. Um, every part and piece was designed, written, illustrated all by me. Um, so this it's is your baby. Is my baby. It's an expression of my heart and soul. All of the the rotten parts, all of the good parts, all kind of mixed into one one little piece. It's a an interesting exploration. But it's beyond that, I mean, I'm a, I'm a person just like anybody else who's gone through some hard times, had some, some difficult life lessons be thrown my way. Um, I did not always handle them well. Sometimes I was a raving fool. I've kind of come full circle, I think, in many regards, uh, kind of come back to God, come back to peace, come back to this sense of who I am, if I ever had it before. And I just, I do, I feel incredibly compelled to try to help other people out of that because these feelings, these emotions, these hardships of life, they can be almost too much sometimes. And it almost took me in many different ways. And I just, I don't want anyone else to feel that way. I've felt it. I know how bad it can be. And I know that everyone else out there has the full capacity and range of emotion that I have. And I hope that you don't feel that way. So hopefully people can learn from my lessons instead. Um, most of us learn by experience, so right. probably have to go through it on their own, but <laughs> every little bit that I can do, the better. So I guess that is who I am right now. I'm uh, starting a podcast, I officially launched of three episodes, still kind of horrified of speaking into a camera. Yes. Untold it's hard. audience. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing about it yesterday. It's, it's kind of just like a Cyclops eye that doesn't blink at you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. You have no feedback, even a little bit. And that makes me so uncomfortable. I like right. to have conversations with people, you know, Right. <laughs> but at, at, at this moment, that is my best introduction that I have of myself. Um, <laughs> That's great. Did you have acting in your experience at all? Or cause I get the uh, no, sense that um, you have acting, maybe not. No, just my life trying to put on a front for people. Right. <laughs> 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 or voiceovers. Cause like the way you present yourself, it's very much you've had acting or voiceover experience. No, no, I never had. Um, I've had some people tell me that. Um, okay. I did do a little bit of. Uh, have you heard of Toastmasters? Yeah. I, I did a little bit of that, so I have a very small amount of public speaking training. I guess you could say. Okay. Moderate feedback for like the ten times that I went. Okay. One of the things they said, they're like, "I love your voice." Like, right. You could totally, like do a podcast or something, and I was like, you know, maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't ever thought about it. Until someone else told me maybe I should. I had never thought about writing a poetry book until mm. someone told me that I should. Um, and I talk about that in the book some. So. Okay. I call those nudges. And okay. some nudges I feel like are spiritual nudges. They come from on high or from, you know, higher power kind of nudges. And then other nudges I think come through other people. And I especially love it when it's from kind of a, a third party or a... 
I don't know what to call it, third tier friend, yeah. <laughs> like where they're not so close to you where you're like, are they just being nice? But yeah. they're like out of the blue, like, have you thought about this? And you're like, what? Sometimes those ones may be the most honest. Right. They have no reason to be nice to you. Right. Like if they're just kind of this third party person existing in your space. Yeah. If they tell you something, maybe listen to it. Unless it's yeah. just like absolutely horrible. They may just be being mean. <laughs> right. But that's but it, them thing, sometimes right? there's a connection though, I think, right? Where okay. you hear it and then you connect it to something in your brain. You're like, there's something there. Of course. I, of course. I think I want to do and because you did it. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> and made your book. Yeah. And I was I, I went through a period where I'd really fallen away from the church, fallen away from everything. I was very atheist and nihilistic. Okay. Uh, from a full secular perspective for like almost a decade. And I never would have admitted to it before, but I'm fully open to it now. Like you were saying, I think some of these are spiritual nudges. Mm -hmm. In many ways, I mean, I think we're more like spiritual beings that are right now experiencing a physical experience. Right. So every part and piece of life that's happening to you in one way is a spiritual experience. And yeah. I think everything is ordered and directed in a way. So even those people coming into your life, they may think it's them entirely and they may be operating in their free will and all that, but right. things are coordinated in such a way that I think all of it is God working, nudging you, pushing yeah. you ever so slightly in different directions with different insights and different parts and pieces that will help you determine on your own. <laughs> right. I need to go do this thing. Right. Maybe I need to believe in myself a little bit more than I have been. <laughs> you know? Oh, you know, that that's uh, huge. I think some people come off as super confident. Then there's a lot of people that actually have a lot to offer that aren't feeling as confident in sharing it. And, um, and then just trusting like, Hey, I just have to keep taking the next step and next step and going, wait, I, I, I have something to offer. I, I, I and I can come and show up exactly as I am and offer it. Like there's some people that, and I'm I'm still learning this, even though I'm um, older than you are. But I don't care. Like as I talk to people, I don't really care much about age. I care about thought process and everything because I'm learning from people of like my son who's seven all the way to my grandfather that was a hundred. <laughs> he was turning 101 when he died, and I like as long as you're open to learning all these people, but to go, if we're going to be on this planet, we might as well seek to obtain like the best version of ourselves, whatever that is. And sure. some people will listen to you and you could say the same thing that I say, but they won't hear it coming from me, but they'll hear it from you. And especially if you've shared that you have had, you've gone through a struggle, right? It's different than a guy. I don't, I'm assuming you're in your twenties. Yeah, I'm 26. Okay. So if you're in your twenties, that there might be someone else who's 26 that comes to the mic and share something, but if they did not go through some of those struggles you went through, there's going to be people who are like, I don't, I don't care what they said. I want to hear the guy who's like made it through the tough stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, this privileged person. What, what do you know about my life? My perspective, right? <laughs> of but course, like everybody you. has stuff, but you of know, course, of course. but I do like what you're saying, like how, how you're learning from your seven-year-old son. Yeah. Different things in life that we learn and then forget. Right. We learn at this age and it applies in, at this age in this way, but then you, you've grown, you've adapted. You're existing in a world that's totally different than you existed in before. Yeah. Same lesson yeah. still applies. So sometimes you just have to be retaught again, just from a slightly different angle. And, and kind of going back just a little bit to the, the thing you were saying about confidence. Um, mm -hmm. Because people tell me all the time, like, oh, Kevin, you seem so confident. You seem so good. Or like, like you said, you seem like you've had training in this. <laughs> oh, I'm terrified. I'm so nervous. <laughs> uh, are you nervous right now? You, you're making you very comfortable. Okay. Um, but this process of kind of getting into being a, a speaker, a podcaster, and everything else that it will bring me to, it's nerve wracking. Right. Um, I have insecurities out the wazoo, but sometimes you just have to just do it anyway. Right. And that's just the part that I want like everyone to kind of tap into because anyone who's feeling very shy and may look at me like, oh, he's so confident, he's so good at this. Of course he can do it. Yeah. No. <laughs> you can do it too. <laughs> you just have to believe in yourself a little bit, you know? So you, you had said that I just wanted to. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's something that um, I grew up extremely shy. So I very much resonate with any comments about shy because I was quiet and shy. Mm -hmm. And then at home I was neither quiet nor shy. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but um, so I enjoyed if I had to give a talk at church or if I had to do a speech at school, because I was like, no one's going to interrupt me. I have my plan thing I'm going to say. And even though I don't like reading it, I have bullet points and uh, I like a chance to share without worried about someone who was interrupting or anything. But uh, at the same time, it it's still every time you put yourself out there, it, you know, there's this trepidation and then you get into it and you start sharing. And then I listen to my own podcast. I listen to my own thing. Cause I'm like, what did I share today? I don't even, <laughs> I don't even remember the stream of consciousness just took me. <laughs> you learn from yourself, but I love how you're just stepping out. Like the, even something that seems like it could be a weakness to some people of being shy, you still showing up and sharing what you need to share, it comes across confidently. So somehow I've been noticing lately people that are showing up even when it's hard and I'm like, good for you. Like you are, and I needed to hear from some of them. And so I was super grateful that they showed up. Of course. No, and I totally resonate with you. When I was younger, you probably know a little bit about my, about my family, uh, but we moved all the time. I didn't know that until I listened to your podcast because oh, okay, I cool. lost track of that after yeah. you well, we had moved away and then we moved back and forth uh, several places. But I went to three middle schools in two years, two different mm. high schools and all in these very formative periods. Like I, that same person, like I, all of a sudden I'm thrown into this place again where I know nobody. Right. I feel just entirely alone. Like I, I've been the kid who sat at lunch by himself with nobody. But then I also have been extraordinarily popular <laughs> at different okay. times. Like later in high school, I was voted homecoming prince and all these things. Oh, um, so I've been a bit of everything. Okay, um, that's awesome. But all the while, still kind of going back to those formative years where I was very quiet, I was very shy, very timid to put myself out because I mean there was always the risk we might move again. So I didn't even really right. want to get close to anybody because I might just get ripped away from them again, you know? Yeah. Um, so all of that, like, it still kind of sits in you. Yes. All those formative years as you're, as you're moving up and you can overcome it. Absolutely. But overcoming it, it can be a monster. Well, so, it's, it's almost like, like not it. overcoming it. It's working through it. I'm just doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the working you mentioned in one of the episodes. What was it? I really like, I, I took notes. Um, Great. You, Hopefully this is something good, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was good because you were, you were sharing something about the moves and you said you were avoiding people because it was preventing the pain of loss, but it was also preventing the joy of living. Mm. And I think that is, like that's such an important thought to keep front of mind always going, what, you know, will I regret not taking that chance later? Of course. Will I regret like holding back to keep myself safe now? You always will. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, always right. will. There's never a time in my life that like I've regretted going and doing it anyway. Mm. Maybe I could have learned a lesson how to do it better or something. Yeah. But I, I've, I've heard um, there's been several different, people who have done this, but they could do kind of like a survey of elderly people in retirement homes. Mm. And they wouldn't ask them like, what's your deepest regret? And it was always the things that they never did. I never told that. Oh. Girl. I never went and pursued my dream. I just kind of sat in my cubicle and did my work. Yeah. I, I never went and I, I always wanted to ride a motorcycle, never did it. But now I'm 95 and I can't. Right. But it was funny. It was, or you it was, can. You, I mean, you can. You know? <laughs> With someone else. <laughs> <laughs> or just do it yourself, you know, see how yeah. far you get. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was almost every single one of them. They all said just things that they wish they had done but never did. Things right. that their heart and soul were calling them to do, but they never pursued because of fear, because of time restrictions, because of family obligations, all these things. A lot of people, they, they lose themselves in their life. Yeah. And... If you lose yourself, you're the main actor in this story. And if you lose yourself, what's the story? You know, you're not living. Wow. And if it is just because of fear, like like I was for a long time, like like you had kind of quoted there, I was holding myself back because of the fear of the pain of loss. And that seems very reasonable to do. You know, if I just kind of segment myself and separate myself, I never have to deal with that heartache. 
But then you go back to that saying, it's better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. And it seems cliche, but it's absolutely true. Right. Absolutely true. Because if you didn't go and live, what was the point? <laughs> there, there was a woman years ago, I loved it. She said, and I promise not to do this, but I have, um, where she said, have you lived the same year 10 times or have you lived 10 years? Mm. And I, when I heard it, I was like, oh, I'm, I am not going to do that. <laughs> but how it really goes is you'll live the same year, two years, mm. then you'll live a year and then you'll live the same year, three years. And I'm kind of comfortable <laughs> here. You know, things are okay. Yeah. yeah. So pretty soon you have lived a total of 10 years. Yeah. Like, say, And I even went through all of my past journals. I love how you said to keep writing. I, yeah. I have poor grammar, but I have probably written more journals than most people on the planet. And I still have poor grammar, but I went through them. And there were a couple journals where I was like, I am saving a couple pages from this one journal and I'm burning the rest because I had a burn barrel at my disposal <laughs> because I was like, I am saying the same thing over and over. I'm like, I just wasn't getting it like for a couple of years. And there's a lot of shame in that. And then I worked to the shame. I'm like, Rebecca, that's how long it took you to just churn for those same desires or despairs or whatever over and over. But I have like the few pages that represent those three years. <laughs> I save those. And then I'm like, I want to let that other stuff go. I just want to let it go. And it, you know, no, some people are like, oh, that's horrible. I'm like, no, sometimes I do decide to let go of something because I've already processed and worked through it. And yeah. it's not serving me to hold on to it. If I've already <laughs> learned the lesson, why do I have to keep relearning it? <laughs> right. Or why reminding to, myself of how stupid it was. Thinking about the times I've suffered, which makes me sad and makes me suffer now. No. Right. <laughs> Right. I learned my lesson already. I did my time. I did my time. <laughs> right. Um, but you're right. Sometimes it takes a long time to get, get through these things. I've heard that on average, like 90% of the thoughts that we have every day are the exact same from yesterday. Mm. Like roughly, roughly around 90%, some staggeringly high number that right. we're just very repetitive in our thinking. And I was listening to, I think it was Jordan Peterson. Um, okay. He's a psychologist and all that. Interesting stuff. guy. Oh, definitely is. <laughs> But he's pretty well versed in um, yes in psychology and what he was talking about like, with anxiety and these kind of repetitive thoughts and processes if you're caught in that cycle it's a signal from your brain that it's still trying to process past trauma mm. it still hasn't fully realized and recognized yet what went wrong and how to prevent it again in the future ah Hyper focusing over and over again, trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out. And one of the biggest problems is when we get caught in these cycles of repetitive thought, is that we often freeze. We often oh. stagnate in our life. So right. you never have new input that comes in that helps you overcome these problems. Because in order to, to overcome an issue that you don't have a solution for, you need more input, you need more answers, you need more life experience. Right. To give you the answers to those solutions, but we often freeze. And we go inward because yeah. we don't want to feel the pain, but right. continuing to live through it anyway, will oftentimes give you the exact information you need to overcome those previous doubts. Yeah. And sometimes like if you've been shy, you've been hurt or cast out, you've been made fun of, you've been all of these things before and you go inward, you never go and meet the people that tell you you're great. Yeah. Like that's just an example. And all right. you really needed was some validation from some people that like, no, no, you are awesome. But if you never go and live and never go and speak to anybody ever again, you'll never get that input and you'll just sit and wallow in your own pity. You know, it, it's very interesting. Um, well, to me, <laughs> to you. But this last year, I, I, uh, I got to be in a very lonely place because I got to take care of a home that my parents were buying. It was my grandparents' home. So I, had, I was on these five acres in Idaho, with my son. I had a lot of time to think. That's when I went through processing all these mementos, journals, all this stuff. And I kind of decided not to reach out to people. I only let a couple people in. Hmm. And it happened to be important for me, right? Because I'm always quick to turn things around to positive. And I allowed myself to sit in more pain and everything. And then I don't know when, and I'm going to be asking you in a minute or two, like when you had a tipping point, because I have realized that I had... Like I made a decision a few months ago. I'm like, well, I need to start reaching out to a couple more friends and a couple more family. And it's interesting because 
every few weeks I'll write down all the different people that I've texted with or talked to on the phone. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I have more friends than the average person, right? And I was pushing everyone away and having all this pain and inviting them in. They need me. I need them. I feel so much better about myself because I'm being helpful and I'm getting these insights from people. And I like, I, I have to honor that I needed that space to feel pain and like go, oh, this is how, because I'm not someone who sits and wallows in self-pity for long periods of time, but I did allow it. And like, okay, that's long enough. <laughs> and and I like I what learned. you said, because Mark Twain, I think, had a quote about, um, or maybe it's someone else, the same brain that created the problem cannot be the same brain that solves the problem or something like that. And to your point, like that churning, you have to get to the point in the churn where you decide, okay, I need to let someone else in. I've got to look at something else because this brain's not going to solve it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like you said, new experiences need to be added, new people, things you like that it. for you to think differently. Yeah, of course. So interesting stuff did you have a particular moment like you were going through stuff over a period of years it sounds like but like there's a point where you're like wait a second i, I need to change something up here it's not working yeah. um i don't know if i had an exact moment or there was many different moments that that served that purpose for many different frustrations i had in life okay one thing rarely does it for everything, right? Right. Um, Though marketing tends to, you know, appeal to that with one pill or one. <laughs> yeah, but but it may satisfy that one part, right? But right. kind of needs a little bit of everything. And I just want to say, I mean, that's kind of fantastic that you had that time to kind of go inward because you do have to hold space for those emotions. I think right. that every part and piece of our life is there for a reason, but we can't ever get too caught in just one. Life is always mm -hmm. changing, but while it's there, you have to experience it. Um, so that's great that you did that. I mean, I think everybody should give themselves that chance to feel what they're feeling because you're feeling it right now for a reason. But I, I did kind of get caught in my anger and frustrations for a while. And a lot of it was tied to, to sadness and fear and heartbreak and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But if they just kind of fester, they can kind of turn into to anger sometimes. Right. And outwardly, I was always projecting a very kind of positive demeanor. I was always very positive for other people. Mm. I could help other people. People always came to me with their problems. But inside, like I never did that to almost anybody. I rarely ever went to anybody. Mm. Um, and I just kind of let it fester inside of me. It's kind of, I guess, a long story, all the different parts and pieces. But I had started drinking a lot. I was smoking a lot, running around in many different ways. And all of it, it was just, it was tearing me down entirely. Hmm. Um, I'd gotten to this point where I was, I was still in school. I was still pursuing things, still doing well in many outward aspects and regards. But I guess my tipping point, I was, I think, almost a senior in college. I was going through one of my busiest semesters and it's graphic design school. And for anyone who doesn't know, it's a ton of work you have to do in art school. Um, <laughs> a lot of people don't give art school students credit it's a lot and right. i was doing four studio classes plus another class called in-house design which mm -hmm. my advisor told me was crazy that i shouldn't do it she's like i've had other students do this but they all hated it but i was like i gotta do it to finish on time so i'm gonna do it so i was in my busiest semester on top of that i was working 30 to 35 hours a week mm -hmm. and i was having to pull a bunch of all-nighters but i had been uh, eating a lot of fast food and all kinds of things on top of it, just trying to manage my schedule. And also I didn't have the will in me to cook because I was also dealing with my depression, anxiety and all kinds of things. Um, so I put on a ton of weight. I was up to about 260, 265. Um, but I'd also been a heavy smoker and it smoked mm. myself into asthma. Um, oh. But I hadn't, like I'd gone to several doctors. I just had this chronic cough that just wouldn't leave me. Wow. And I went to many doctors. They all knew that I was smoking and vaping and doing all of those things. But they're all like, you know, the cough, it's probably just allergies. So mm. they'd give me some stuff. It didn't do anything. And I went to like six doctors before it finally got recognized. Wow. But I was kind of like losing hope. I was like, there's nothing I can do here. And it was getting so much worse at night. At nighttime, mm. I was just coughing and coughing and coughing. I couldn't sleep. 
Mm. In my busiest semester, my I'm working all the time. I'm putting on weight. My body's just falling apart. I'm coughing. I can't sleep. I'm averaging maybe like three hours of terrible sleep every night. Wow. My hair's like starting to fall out. Everything, just everything was running amok. And like I hadn't really dealt with my depression or any of the problems that I was dealing with. It was just kind of sitting in there and festering as I was just trying to suppress it, trying to smoke right. the pain away, trying to do all these things, right. ruining every part of myself. And I had been running from love for a very long time. And I talk about it in the book, but there was a lovely girl who came into my life. She was actually the one, she was a poet herself, had self-published a book wow. at 19 and was working on her second one when I met her. Wow. And it had never crossed my mind to do that. I had started writing some, started doing this already. But then she kind of came in. She's like, oh, yeah, no, like, I love your poetry. I'm like, wow. get me, you absolutely do this. And I was like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But she kept encouraging me to write. Okay. And in that process, I was kind of getting out all that stuff that I had been suppressing for a long time. But I was still like very frustrated with life and everything. This was kind of like around the COVID time. Politics mm -hmm. was going crazy. The world was going insane. Virgil, yeah. World War III. All of my frustrations and fears <laughs> all manifesting into my reality all at one time. <laughs> and there was one day in particular that I didn't even really recognize. But she's my ex-girlfriend now. We broke up for various reasons. Great lady. Um, really love her. But we were actually talking not too long ago. And it, it came back into mind. There was one day where she noticed a change in me. And she was very positive. Always positive. All the time. And it was good for me in that. Because it was bringing a light into my life that I was just not seeing. But even her, we were talking about something. And I was just being a Debbie Downer, <laughs> just entirely, just all negative. Anything she would say, I had a counter for it. And eventually she kind of threw her hands up in the air. She's like, all right, Kevin, I, I got to go. <laughs> it kind of did. It made me think. I was like, okay, even her, I'm, I'm taking her off. If I'm making her <laughs> frustrated, something, something's wrong here. Maybe I'm being too negative. Maybe I'm being too harsh here. Um, so that was one part in peace. Um, but that was, that was a, a big one where she started seeing a change in me. And half of it was just me trying to be more positive about myself. It was like, I was always usually very positive for other people, but I never applied it to myself. But when I, when I saw that, I was finally like, okay, maybe I need to just try. <laughs> maybe I need to shut the news off a little bit and <laughs> just try to be a little bit more positive about my expectation of my situation. So that was a big one. So a person in your life kind of just living and being a mirror to you to, to let you see yourself. Right. Um, but an even bigger one really was when I started kind of getting back into my spirituality. Um, Cause that, that was a big one. I had really put that away for a long time and it was one of my biggest frustrations. It was also one of my biggest obsessions. I was always looking for my, my purpose, my reason. And when I had fallen away from, from church, the Mormon church in particular gave you a very kind of rigid structure, kind of expectation of like what you're here for, what your destination is, all of that. When I fell away from that, I lost all of it. I lost all of it. Um, I had no reason. Everything I had been learning in science and astronomy, everything was telling me an entirely different story. And I was like, something else has to be the reason. And it's not God, right? I put it all kind of any ideas of God that I'd ever heard, I put it all on on the back burner and in the same category as I would like the gods of ancient Greece, just a story. Something else is the explanation and everything I had been learning kind of kept pushing me to this idea that it's all just random coincidence and ultimately nothing means anything anyway. <laughs> and in some ways, you know, you can take that in a positive light and be like, well, you know, I guess I'm lucky to have it. Right. Let me enjoy it. Or you can go down the rabbit hole. I did where nothing matters anyway. <laughs> So what is the purpose? What is the reason? Um, and I spent a lot of time in that space and I would debate people all the time. I would <laughs> try to turn other people away from their faith. Cause I'm like, you're wasting your life. You're like, well, <laughs> so I was in a horrible place mentally, but I'd finally realized that maybe I had been throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Maybe certain interpretations of what God were maybe weren't right given these factors, but that doesn't mean that God <laughs> doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that purpose doesn't exist. Yeah. And one friend at work who, like she had no reason to kind of lie to me about different experiences she had had. 
she had kind of convinced me to do some like meditation and I'd found some guided meditation on YouTube or something and kind of just tapped in and it put me in a good headspace. But it was a powerful experience that I had where like, even in my mind, it was like a, like a visual experience and it was a very touching moment. And I kind of came out of that and I was like, Oh, something happened. The secular side of me, the science based mind wanted to be like, Oh, it was just manifestations of your imagination and all these things. But I was like, but that was powerful. Maybe I need to tap into that a little bit more. So I was like, you know what? I had tried praying. I tried to keep my faith for a long time, but I'd pray and not really get the answers I was looking for and made me feel hopeless. And eventually I kind of just tossed it away. But I was like, you know, I'm going to give it an honest try. An honest try. I'm not just going to pray again once or twice, not get an answer that I expect and then cast it away like I always did. I was like, I'm going to do this. And I, I kept thinking about, you know, all of the different spiritual masters and things that you, you've heard about. They've all found their enlightenment through dedicated meditation practice or dedicated, dedicated prayer practice, dedicated breath work or things like that. So I was like, I'm going to try it. So I, I started doing like an hour a day, at least, of breath work, meditation, all these things, just trying to connect to it. What? I don't know. To whatever it is, I'm like, if you're there, I'm here and I'm listening. Wow. It went for months before I really started to kind of tap in and be like, something's there. Something hears me. I'm, I'm connecting to something in a way that I, I can't just deny anymore. Mm. And there's a whole Trevor, treasure trove of stories that, that go into that. But when I started to do that, started to tap in after giving it an honest try, and that's the most important mm. part. Because a lot of people will try a lot of things, do it once or twice, and like, oh, I'm no good. Right. That's not an honest try. So that same principle can be applied to everything in your life. Yes. Podcasting, writing, all the things. Give it an honest try for months. Go six months doing this every day, and if it still doesn't work out, then maybe you have an answer. Right. Usually it'll work out. Um, but when I started to do that, and I started to look more and more into this, I started to find more purpose again. Hmm. I started to look past just this experience I'm having right now. And I was finding existence beyond hope for the future in ways that I just didn't have before. And in that, like once, once I started kind of tapping back into there, it was, it was kind of over kind of done in many situations. I still had to deal with the, the things that were paining me. Right. But I had a reason to now. I had no reason to, to deal with any of those. I posted a reel of one of my poems in that, um, where that's and I titled escapism, um, where it was kind of talking about that. I was like, pain is just for a moment, right? So mm -hmm. there's no need to go exploring it. <laughs> it's like, maybe I should just ignore this. Like, maybe I can just suppress all of this and live a lifestyle dormant and numb to everything. That's what I've been doing for years. Smoking myself into oblivion, right? Because I had no reason not to anyway. Now I have a reason. That among many other things, I mean, different conversations, different people all pinpointing me and directing and guiding me. But those two things in particular, that, that one girl, Ellen, coming into my life, mm -hmm. being this mirror for me, and then really kind of setting in and finding my connection to source, to God, to spirit, that kind of centered perspective again. After that, it's like, I, I have no reason not to follow these promptings anymore because I believe that they're coming and they're good and they're for right. me and directing and guiding me. So even though it's terrifying for me to get into podcasting and things like that, I'm going to do it anyway because I feel prompted and I have faith. Yeah. You know? And it, it's going to lead you to lots of other things. I mean, that, that was a really beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I think that, and just when you summarize saying that girl that came into your life and realizing, oh, you may have thought she's going to be in your life longer, but she was there for that moment, for whatever that those reasons were to help. And then I always love hearing from people that have dealt with going from the atheist to belief in higher power, from higher power to atheist, back to higher power, whatever, which is why sometimes when I see these books and I grab them where like doctors die and they come back to life, you know, you know yeah. and if, especially if they only believed in science and then they had this experience 
And a lot of them have different experiences, but there's a lot of similarities in the experiences that they come back changed and knowing, oh, there is a higher purpose than myself. Oh, there is a higher power that is willing to guide me and love me. Yeah. And, um, and they all seem to go on to like do something amazing, right? Whether it is having more amazing relationships, being more amazing at their profession, like go in a different path and to just, I'm lucky I'm someone who I get to hear other people's experiences and go, okay, I see that that has helped them. I believe them. <laughs> I believe what they're saying and I'm going to take it to heart. Um, but I love how you're, you realized you were raised with something, you went away from it, but when you came back to whatever coming back means for you, that you came to a habit that you may have had in the past with a different heart mm. and got something different from it. Cause you were actually seeking an outcome versus checking a box. Of course, of course. Kind of thing. And that, that was kind of an interesting thing to. And that, that's a very big up. part. Um, being raised in a faith is one thing. Cause like you're kind of told this is true and all these things, but like, if you've never had that connection yet, you don't really believe it yet. Like you may believe it cause people tell you it, but you don't like know it. Yeah. Right. It isn't until you have those experiences that you're like, okay, this is true. Yeah. Um, but the biggest thing about that, and I think why after those big experiences that people start to just branch out and just start to excel in their life is because they have purpose now. That I think is the biggest part and piece is purpose. It was the thing that I struggle with the most. Cause like my first two years in college, I was undeclared. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I battled this idea back and forth all the time. Like, who am I? What am I? What do I enjoy? I don't know. And then I was incredibly nihilistic and atheist. Nothing has a purpose anyway. So why go do anything? Why try to excel? Why? I have no reason. But if yeah. you have a purpose, people will do a staggering amount of work if they think they have a reason to do it. Right. And go to the end of the earth <laughs> if they believe it's for a good reason. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they're going to stop where they stand. But if they have yeah. a purpose, they'll do anything. They'll make anything happen. Yeah. They'll climb the tallest mountain because they feel compelled to do so. They have a reason to do it. I want to be the one that does it. Right. That means something to them. So that's the biggest thing. And ultimately, kind of what... I will and want to be focusing on with my podcast and really anything that I do in my life is trying to focus on that purpose mm -hmm. and everyone finding and harnessing their individual purpose because yes. I battled with religion. I battled with the generalities of purpose. Mm -hmm. There is a general life purpose, right? Yes. Then there's your purpose in the mix and that's an individual thing for everybody. Right. And kind of going back to what we were talking about at the beginning, these things that are just in you. Yes. And that's your purpose. What do you love? What makes your heart sing more than anything else? That is right. your purpose. And it really is. It's a beautiful thing if you think about it. How God wants this for you. God wants this mm. from you. But it's also the thing that you enjoy the most. Yes. How wonderful. Now, yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like the well, most loving thing in the world. It's like I'm gonna make you love this thing and you go and do it and help everyone else around you. Yeah. It's also gonna be the happiest you'll ever be. Okay, great. It, it's kind of a it's like a double gift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what what's so interesting is so often like the girl and other people who've told you have nudged you, we often are so busy going about doing stuff that we can't see ourselves in that purpose. And we need someone to share it with us. Cause we don't see us me. Like, I, I don't know if you've had this, but I've had people when I'm doing something, that's my purpose, they'll be like, Rebecca, you lit up when you were talking about that, or you were fully stepping into you when you do that. And I, and I didn't know it, yeah. but when they alerted me, I'm like, Oh, okay, that's a data point and it allows you to kind of step into it. And then what I love is that for whatever reason, it's built in us that once we start feeling that and stepping into it more, we are compelled to go share. It's kind of like if you, I don't know, had a great hamburger or a great 
you know, dessert somewhere, or you loved a restaurant, or you loved a ride at an amusement park, you're compelled to go tell someone else to go do it. Yeah. And yeah. it's part of us. And now I'm what you I'm loving. Yeah, you share it. And then yeah, you know, I'm seeing that right now, there's so many people coming to this. I've got someone now trying to talk to me. <laughs> Persuasive. Oh, okay. Thank you for a word. <laughs> word okay. That's what is in your word. Okay. Well, you know, the, these things that everyone <laughs> is doing and how it lights them up is quite persuasive. Yeah, it, it <laughs> is. And so he is right. So he's like, he's listening. He's right on it. Yeah. But, um, but what I have loved recently is, and, and I think this ties into some of your poetry, which I'm excited to read more of it because I've listened to your things on Instagram, is that I am not a person that in my communicating, I'm not a swearer. I'm not like crude. I'm not like certain things, but some of the biggest people, like the people that I'm learning the most from right now are <laughs> right. And yeah. so I like follow these Navy seals. I, and following some of these people that they like, they're getting so many tattoos because it's a sign of their new commitments to life or growth or whatever. And there's a lot of alpha males I'm listening to. And yet there, and I even have a episode I just did about this where, but then I'll have like someone over here who's very quiet and kind, but they've been exactly the social emotional support I've needed. So I've learned from them. And then there's someone over here that's tough love and telling me this and that. I'm like, okay, I needed that. And I just love how people are able to sh show up and fully express themselves and still be guiding people to a higher purpose, guiding them to a higher power. And it's all different kinds of people. And like, we don't have to be the same. <laughs> no, no, it's actually better that we're not. <laughs> right. And that's one of the most fascinating things. And a point that I think should never be lost is like life is so complex, so complicated. If you think about all of the different parts and pieces that make up just the physical universe, let alone the multidimensionality of the universe, let alone the spiritual side of life, let alone all of the interpersonal connections and little things, it is so complex. <laughs> we, there is so much diversity, so much variety, but like that's exactly how it's supposed to be. So to be like a fully well-rounded individual, you have to be taking in information and perspectives from every, everybody, right. every lifestyle, because there's other things over there that they've experienced that you will never touch. But there's valuable lessons over there that you can right. apply to your situations over here and vice versa, you to them. And I you, love just, that. You, you have to do it. And that's the beauty of, of speaking, the beauty of people telling their stories is that we get to kind of share all of these things because you and your life all alone you'll never be able to learn it all how could you you're right. limited to your life experiences which is likely like an infinite number of things that can happen to you right <laughs> but there's an infinite number of more experiences that you will never touch so you need it from other people <coughs> excuse me remnants of my past <laughs> um but yeah no it's uh it's a beautiful thing because they are all thinking in an ever so slightly different way too, because two people can experience the exact same experience and take two totally different things from it too. Right. Um, so it really is, it's a beautiful thing. And it's something I, I do, I talk about in my book and that like, I, I want people to be, to lean even more into their individuality. Like mm. who are you? And I know we all are like a culmination of all of our life experiences and influence and all those things. But who are you in the midst of that? Yeah. Go and share it. Go and love it. Go and live it. Um, go and be that light for someone else. Right. Because um, you had said it um, a little bit ago, and another thing that I say in my book too is we ourselves sometimes need other people to kind of come in and either be that mirror or be the eyepiece that allows us to know that we're lighting up right now. That right. we are important. We, we are these things. And if you have insecurities, if you have all of this negative self-talk in your mind, you're going to downplay yourself in every way, shape, and form. But if someone else can come in and see the good in you that you're not recognizing anymore, then it allows you to be able to think again and, and see it yourself. And that's what Ellen was for yeah. me. It was a beautiful thing. It's something I hope to be for other people. I mean, what a gift to give to other people. The beauty of oh, the it's huge. Own it's, self, you it's know? the uh, 
beauty of beauty from ashes thought, mm-hmm. you know, that it's, it's, um, you can turn it around and use it in a way that serves you of course, and others. Of course. I mean, ash makes for a great charcoal that you can make a <laughs> heart. You, know? you can brush your teeth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't bite me right up. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so cool. Well, I thought I was going to be asking you to read poetry and, and everything on this, but it's so fun to talk about the stuff, but I realized I I have so much fun on these things. And I look at the clock, I'm like, what? (laughs) We've talked for an hour, but it would be fun if you had a poem you want to share. Sure, sure. But yeah, I found a poem. I kind of just flipped through, Um, but this one actually is one of my favorites. Like writing is an interesting thing. Like I was saying earlier, like I think, because we are spirit existing and currently experiencing a a human experience. I think everything that we do is a spiritual experience. And this one, some poems have come to me seemingly almost out of nowhere, where I didn't even necessarily know what words I was going to be writing. I was just writing almost free speed. Other poems I sat with for months. But this was one that came to me very quickly. Um, and spoke to me a lot, right as I had finished writing and I reread it and reread it. And in many ways was exactly what I needed to hear. And it's a, it's a fun one. It's one I have a bunch of art for and everything. So there's art Beautiful. all throughout the book. Go purchase my book on Amazon. Give me all your money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it really is my favorite, but it's called Here Comes More Rain. My knuckles bear the scars of my frustrations. My psyche bears a wisdom much the same. My world has been a whirl of wind, if nothing else, cutting paths with rivers rained. Perhaps I should stay bitter, grow deeper lines of scowling age, lose my sight to all things good as if all things fade the same. But this search for truth has led me far into the wild, free, untamed. Where it is clear to see, this is how things are, and this they should remain. For to be good, there's bad. To be peace, there's war. But to be free, there are no chains. And I am free for now, alive and well, still full of good, though ripe with pain. I am soon to let the wild bloom. But first, here comes more rain. So there's that one, one of my favorites. You are a poet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, That's wonderful. Yeah, I, I love that one very much. Because it kind of calls to some of what we've been talking about. How in life, I think all of the things that we experience are what we're supposed to be experiencing. Sometimes it's the darkest moments, the hardest things that will teach you the most. And sometimes it'll leave you a, a battered and bloody mess riddled with scars all throughout you. But at the same time, it is the thing that gives you the context in your life to the good, that will teach you the lessons that that strengthen you and allow you to move forward with confidence. And you can choose to be bitter, you can choose to be angry, you can choose to be upset about the hardships that life has cast upon you. But if you see them for what they really are, just that contrast, that, that lesson to be learned, that thing that allows the good to exist. Because if there wasn't hardship, there would be no good. It's the contrast that makes the good so wonderful. If all you had was good, everything is moot. Nothing is, it's neutral, it's dull. It's the lows that make the highs what they are. And if you realize that, then, oh my goodness, it is... It's the rain that lets the wild bloom, that lets, that feeds life. You can be upset that, oh, I have to stay in today because it's raining, but it's also, it's the reason that life is so lush and beautiful. It's exactly that. So all of these things, all of the, the hardship that you're going through, insecurities that you have, all of it's just the framework that's guiding you, leading you, and directing you in the way that you are supposed to go. You just have to sit with it for a little while. Learn the lessons that you're supposed to go through. Learn. Go through those cycles of repetition until it finally clicks. But go and live your life. Even even with that pain, even with that fear, go and do it anyway. 
and it will lead you to a beautiful place. At least that's what I got from that poem when I wrote it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that I mean, that's amazing. I was actually thinking, wow, that's going to be something you share, something that's going to be a song, something that's going to be a quote on a wall. I just get the feeling, you know, though you may feel like you are just starting this journey of putting stuff out there, it feels like you are very advanced in your understanding of many things that I think that some people sometimes put themselves out there before they've experienced some of these, this wisdom that you're already sharing, right? You have to experience work through everything. And then this wisdom starts popping out <laughs> the other end of the day of the, uh, I, I was thinking of a machine, right. Or like a blender, you know, you put all these ingredients in yeah. and it's all messy and everything, but what comes out is some pretty good cookies or whatever oh. you're making, but <laughs> you so to much. just Thank encourage you. you to keep going, even if you only see a couple people looking at your stuff right now, there's depth and wisdom in it that I know is going to help other people, but continue to help you be inspired for yourself. Right. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I need more inspiration every day. Right. Um, but thank you. That, that really means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, and that was, that was something that, that Ellen, um, a girl I dated for a while, something she had told me in a moment where I was still dealing with all my frustrations, it still hadn't clicked. Like, why did I have to go through all of this? Why did, why did my family have to fall apart? Why did I have to fall away? Why did I have to go through my own relationship problems? Everything that had happened that led me to where I was. And I was already like mostly done with the book at the time. Took me a while to really do all the designing and everything, but she was like, Kevin, isn't it obvious? She was like, you had to go through all that so you could write this book. And when she said that, I was like, well, you know, you're right. <laughs> if I hadn't gone through it, I have nothing to say. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would have nothing to say. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. but it clicked. And, and as I've delved more deeply into it, and, and I, I'm following those promptings and nudges, like you say, that, that I feel like I'm supposed to just try to help people. That's my purpose, to, to love and try to be a light for other people too. Then as well, of course. How are you supposed to connect with anybody if you don't know what they've been through? Now you know. <laughs> now you know how bad it can hurt. But now you know how much love they need. Um, and maybe you'll be able to give it to them in a way that no one else could. Um, so I appreciate, I appreciate what you said. Um, gives me a lot of faith. Um, and I hope I'm headed in the right direction, right? <laughs> I, I, I think so. And I'm saying that from a place of feeling it from you, huh. from your presence, right? From your essence. And I think somehow through the experiences, it increases our compassion. It reduces our judgment. Mm -hmm. And then that is felt by others that interact with us. Like, oh, you are a safe space to you share whatever. Yeah, like you, <laughs> you actually mean it. <laughs> well, good. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I have that presence. <laughs> yes, you have that. Exactly what I want, you know, that's, that's great. Yeah. And it, it comes at a high price, right? It, oh, that's sure. how yeah. it comes. <laughs> um, well, you know, once you have it, it's the most valuable thing in the world, right? So, yeah, yeah. And price. recognizing it, having it's one thing, recognizing it's another layer of, um, it's probably like the then, hardest part for me. <laughs> right. Right. Still battle with that one sometimes, but you will continue to, I think, as you continue to up level yourself and everything. Yeah, the more I, um, you move up, new levels, new devils, they say. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. I like that. I haven't heard that one. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard but, that say that a bunch lately. Um, I really like to make sure that if you're open to it, that at a later date, you can come on and share again because sure. you go through a journey in this process, but it was so fun to have you today. And I want to respect time and everything. No, it's good. I'm, I'm so grateful that you reached out to me. This has been a lot of fun. This, this is really fun. And I learned so much because preparing to learn more about you, then learning more about you and then editing it, the whole process is it's awesome because each time I'm like, oh, I didn't pick up that nugget when he said that. And then, of course, then there's a lot of shame because there's like, why didn't I pull the string on that thought? Oh, I could have asked such a good question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why. But I, I've had a couple people come back on like six months later or whatever, and they have new insights. They've experienced something else or they like one guy now has written three books. <laughs> 
you know, uh, um, his were children's books, but, you know, so good luck to you. Like you have conquered amazing demons, right? And there will be more, right? You're going to the next level of your game. Then there, you know, if you game at all, you know, that there's new challenges at the next level that you sign up for. You know, you beat the game and then you're just bored, you know? It's, right, right. There wasn't more challenges than like, what's the point? <laughs> right. And, um, but absolutely absolutely have me on just reach out to me okay. again and I'd love to so cool well thank you again i will let you go and um it, it was an honor and i can't wait for amazon to deliver the book today <laughs> well be prepared <laughs> for it um you've only seen just a few of the, okay you know, more of the demons that i had to battle <laughs> hey you know what you, you have to be willing to go there <laughs> to go to the thing so thank you again good luck to you i'm excited to see What's coming next? Uh, I'm excited to see it too. <laughs>